Today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the NECA Toys, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Ultimate Leatherface. Who will survive and what will be left of them? The original poster advertising the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. America's most bizarre and brutal crimes. What happened is true. Now the motion picture is just, that's just as real. Um, I like that with the Ultimate lines. NECA is giving us the original poster artwork on the front. That's a nice touch. So the package features, ooh, an ear, as well as some stitch work of what of will be, of course, Leatherface's mask. It says the 40th anniversary. I didn't realize it was that long ago, but I guess what? Chainsaw Massacre 74, if that's correct, on the back. The read-up says this is the tragic tale of five young friends who venture into rural Texas one hot afternoon and become victims of one of the most brutal, one of the most bizarre and brutal crimes in Travis County history. Many of them meet a horrific end at the hands of the murderous lunatic Leatherface in what comes to be known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Leatherface comes with not only an alternate face, comes with the tools to exact murderous revenge, although he doesn't really have much revenge, but uh, includes two interchangeable heads, cleaver, knife, meat hook, mallet, and chainsaw. And finally, just before we open this up, speaking of opening it up, you can see this has a great presentation, very similar to Ultimate Freddy Krueger. You have the inside display of what the Leatherface figure will look like, but you also have a window where you can see the figure too. So if you want to keep this in packaging, which I don't know if I might. I might actually keep it in packaging. Uh, not quite certain yet, but uh, you can still keep it on display and still look and appreciate the figure all the while keeping it still sealed. Of course, I'm not going to do that. Spot's going to take a break. going to get this opened up, and when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the 40th anniversary Ultimate Leatherface. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Out of packaging, Leatherface has never looked this good. Now, before we have a look at the figure, let's of course look at the accessories that come with the figure itself. First things first, we couldn't have started this review with no better of a tool of the trade. Leatherface does come with his trusty chainsaw. Already covered in blood, as indicated by the blades themselves, and also by the very obvious blood splatters all over his apron. Chainsaw is very nicely detailed, though. The blades are not sharp. There's a little bit of pliable uh, rubber plastic to the blade itself, so it's not super fragile. Very exceptional looking piece. Moving along to the smaller of items, he's got himself a small cutting knife. My guess is for cutting the flesh off what will be eventually his masks. Very small knife though. Not as small. Leatherface also comes with a cleaver, brown handle. The metal, I think they've really perfected the coloring of the metal. It's not quite that dull gunmetal gray that we've seen with previous metal released um, accessories. It's kind of got a shine to it, looking as if it's a real, you know, a real sharp cleaver. He also has a meat hook. And as you can see, it has been used. Ooh, it has been plunged into somebody's back. And finally, a mallet, which has the same brown and same gunmetal gray as the other accessories. And finally, at least weapon-wise, we're done. Finally, though, his largest of accessories, Leatherface also comes with an alternate face. A very gruesome, gruesome looking mask. Perfectly made by the folks over at NECA. I feel as if like this should separate, but I don't think they would have given us an Easter egg by giving us something that if you remove the face, you could see something underneath. That would not be the case. But a very gruesome, gruesome looking face. Matter of preference, really, I think I would go with the default face, personally. You can see the differences between the two. And the face should easily just pop right off, just pop the existing head off. There we go. Ooh, I do not like, one thing I will say is I don't like the small sized peg. That's problematic in my, in my eyes. There's what the alternate head would look like. 
it's good, it's movie accurate, but to me it does just, no pun intended, it just doesn't scream Leatherface to me. So for that reason, I think I'll just unpeg it. I'm really worried about how small that peg is on his neck. A little bit of caution, I will say. And look how small the hole is on his head. Uh, pick one head, leave it be. That's the advice. That's the little bit of advice I could give you in this review. Just leave it be. Uh, Leatherface's default face, very screen accurate. Complete with the gruesome looking teeth. The very puffy lips, which I noticed he had also in the movie, and the stitch work face with the large ears. Seems more one of the more cruder looking masks, one of his earlier attempts, I guess, at making a mask. He does definitely perfect that. And I might lose some stripes for saying this, but I also was a fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation Leatherface, where he was dressed as drag. I thought that was really a cool look. Will we ever get a figure like that? Probably very unlikely. His apron, unlike being a plastic soft goods, it's actually a material, which is an exceptionally nice touch. You could remove it if you so wish. There's just a little cord on the back. You just pull it, take the apron off. My knot tying abilities and certainly bow tying abilities are not such that I think I would want to take this off and try to tie that back on. I'll just leave it be. But you can see how all this blood just caked all over the apron. It's a very nice touch. He's also got blood on his knuckles, got some blood on his hands, and his arms very dirty, which is also very, very cool, and obviously translates to a very cool figure. Uh, in the way of his posability, Leatherface does have that ball joint that we were just looking at. Head moves up and down, all the way around. He has hinge socket shoulders, which allow the arms to rotate out and also rotate all the way around. He has a bend in the elbow, a swivel also in the forearm. He has a swivel and hinge in the hand via a small peg that attaches the, the wrist to the hand. If we lift up the torso, it appears that he has a ball joint and this section, much like a lot of other NECA pieces are soft. It's a soft rubber piece covering over the articulation sockets of the legs and where the torso plugs into place. Finally, his legs are also on that ball joint, which makes this the ultimate uh, leather face. Uh, NECA also, of course, many moons ago did the cult classics leather face, but it's so cool that they're going back and re-releasing, not even re-releasing, but just reimagining the old figures that they've done in ultimate treatments. Finally, he has a hinge in the leg that bends the lower leg, which also allows you to rotate the lower leg. And there's that hinge, the ball joint in the knee or in the, uh, the ankle there. Let's go ahead and we'll take the chainsaw, which I think, yes, it does. I thought this before. Um, it, I think it might not be, but I wonder if it's the exact same chainsaw that we got with Leatherface from the, uh, and actually I don't even think I have to do that. I think it's almost the exact same chainsaw that we got with the Leatherface from the retro cloth line, which I could not figure out how to get it into the hand because that hand was actually sealed shut. Luckily this chainsaw wielding maniac's hand is partially open, so at least I can fit the chainsaw in place. And yes, there is enough clearance. I don't even need to untab this then. There's enough clearance that you can get the chainsaw conv very conveniently, very easily into his hand. You just have to pry the fingers just a little bit to get the chainsaw nestled in there. Just like so. And your I'm spot's doing this off camera, unfortunately. I do apologize. Just getting this chainsaw into his hand. There we go. NECA now has done, well, they're doing a whole ton of, of uh, ultimate reimaginings. I just dropped the chainsaw. NECA's doing a whole ton of reimagined figures in the ultimate banner. They've already done the, uh, Friday th the Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger. We're also going to be getting ourselves a part six, Jason, which I'm super excited for. And uh, we also even got uh, a couple of Terminator figures too. So that's very cool. Uh, an awesome looking figure. NECA could have done, could not have done a better job on this figure. 
I just hope that they want to continue to release ultimate figures. And really, the thing is, as a, as a collector, I have to say to you guys too, is support these lines. If you pick them up, NECA sees the potential in releasing further ultimate figures, and maybe we'll get more Jasons, more Leather Faces, and perhaps, fingers crossed, we might even get ourselves a Michael Myers, and that would be the ultimate, no pun intended. Today's Toy Spot, we were having a look at the NECA Toys 40th anniversary of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We're looking today at Ultimate Leatherface. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more Toy Spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.